Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I would like to declare that I am not a member of Unite or the GMB Trade Union. And when I was elected, I thought I had left the union meetings behind on the railways. But no, today it feels more like I'm gate-crashing a 1970s union meeting in the House of Commons. So socialism is definitely alive and well in today's Labour Party. But here we are again. This is another example of the Labour Party, rather than addressing the issues of the day, just wanting to stay wedded to the European Union. The EU position on employment rights, Mr Deputy Speaker, is worse than the UK's by a country mile. Yet Labour wants us to be bound to EU standards. Maternity leave, 52 weeks in the UK compared to just 14 in the EU. Annual leave, 28 days in the UK compared to just 20 in the EU. And I could go on. So we should ask ourselves, why has the Labour Party really brought this motion to the House today? I think it's because their union paymasters are pulling the strings. Mr Deputy Speaker, the GMB union sent me a briefing last night, so I thought I would do some research into their interests into this debate. The GMB union alone has filled Labour MPs' pockets by £360,000 during this Parliament alone. Unite the union put £578,000 into the pockets of 61 Labour MPs. These are the unions supposedly fighting for rights when really all they are doing is funding the Labour Party to suppress good, decent, hard-working people from choosing how much they work, earn and save with their proposed 32-hour working week. Mr Deputy Speaker, this Conservative Government has almost doubled the personal income tax allowance. So you can earn £12,500 before paying any tax. We have banned exclusivity clauses in zero-hours contracts. We now have shared parental leave and we pay to give working parents that flexibility too. This, Mr Deputy Speaker, is not the sign of a government that wants to reduce employment rights, but one that will continue to strengthen them despite the adversity of the opposition. Yeah,